Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we are talking about multiple income streams, specifically adding a new one, specifically Etsy. And so I have a friend of mine um, from way back. We spoke at a conference together. We presented at a conference together. And um, we met there and he's been doing some amazing things. Oh, we have the kitty there. So Sorry. you all, I want to introduce you to my good friend, Fernando. Fernando, how are you? Welcome to the Amazon Files. Hey, hey how are you, Christine? It's, yeah, it's been a while and hey. Yeah, Same I'm changes. excited to kind of talk about your journey because I know we've kind of been, you know, like parallel moving some paths together and we, we, we've we done some speaking together and we've been in the Amazon world. So I definitely want to jump into talking about our your journey, your journey from, from Amazon and e-commerce and reselling and get into the amazing, exciting things that you're doing now with Etsy. So um, why don't you just introduce yourself and then let, let everybody know a little bit about how you how you got into e-commerce. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Fernando Sustaira. Um I've been in eBay since 98. I mean, I don't sell on eBay. Well, I sell eBay, whatever. I don't sell on Amazon, right? It's my it's my liquidation website. But I've been since, since doing e-commerce since, you know, to 1998, which is hard to say, but it's 25 years. It uh, is. <laughs> it's 25 I know, years. It's an OG. I'm like, I know you've been selling a little bit longer than me. I really started in 2003. So we are yeah. considered OG experts in, in the space now that it's been yeah, a couple today of I was decades. talking to our old friend, you know, you met, you know him, Perry, and we both of both started in 98 and we were like, oh my God. So it's starting to show, you know, our hair is all gray and, you know, we, we are not as skinny as we once were. And, <laughs> but they, um, we have survived all the changes and you know in cultures, changes on infrastructure, changes in technologies. One thing about e-commerce is that it changes consistently. And if you're gonna be doing this as a full-time income or even as a part-time income, you have to adapt. You know, like if you go into one platform today, the marketplace that is, you know, like the promised land, uh, you know, in three years is probably is not going to be. It's probably gonna be somewhere else. So you're probably gonna be doing something else. To be honest, Amazon has lasted for a long time as a marketplace for so many people. But right now we are seeing a kind of an exodus as well. Mm -hmm. You know, that, as we saw on eBay at the time, as we saw at one point on eBay, as we have seen in so many other platforms. So I so have you been started, moving. Did you start with eBay? Is that where your first um, e-commerce yes. experience was? Well, Most people. <laughs> I started with, you know, like I started with eBay and with Amazon at the same time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do not remember that Amazon actually used to have auctions back in 98 so we you know they were trying to compete with ebay and they were making you know auctions and stuff like that but it was awful to sell people were not there buying they were but it was a perfect marketplace to actually go on and buy on those auctions and then sell on ebay for a higher price because you know when you would get some product with ebay with 10 20 30 bits in Amazon, it was like two, three bits. So it was, people didn't really, you know, connect them. Amazon was for books, was for people to buy books, uh, mostly used books. And it was a good uh, good opportunity. But, you know, like, then I went to, then I went, I took a little, you know, I, time off and I went into corporate, uh, and, you know, I did very well, but my God, you know, it's like, and it, it out of the blue, it used you know, I started getting sick again, you know, like I was like, I'm getting tired of following orders. I'm getting tired of having to follow these instructions in, you know, going into meeting rooms, talking about millions of dollars for other people. And, you know, and then you are like, okay, uh, we're talking very big, big, big monies for all these negotiations that I'm doing. I was in contracts. So I, was, I was illegal. And one day I told my wife, I'm done. I'm really done. I really love e-commerce. So I'm going back. And then the beautiful thing happened. I go laid off and I was like, oh, okay. So mm -hmm. uh, that is what it was. Per perfect timing to make perfect a timing. transition when you were yeah. forced. Yeah, I was forced. 2015, uh, I was told a, no, 2014, I was told, yeah, thank you so much. Oil and gas industry was collapsing. Used like right now. And, you know, and I took the journey and now I've been doing this now for, what, nine years straight full time. So and adapting from Amazon to Etsy, Etsy, Shopify, and you know, and it's always something new. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you like to to do multiple platforms in different places and journey from from eBay and auctions to then Amazon. So what was your journey like with Amazon? Did you do um, arbitrage? Were you into wholesale? Like, what was your main business model when you were selling on Amazon? Well, in Amazon, to be honest, when I came back. 
uh, and I started doing this full time. I was doing Facebook market, Facebook groups, mm-hmm. and you know, and selling on them. I am a toy collector. Okay, I'm a kid and hard, mm-hmm. and I have I had like thousands of Hot Wheels. I said, okay, let me. I was gonna liquidate my collection about you know my not my collection a very small portion about mm-hmm. fifteen hundred Hot Wheels. And a before small I real- collection of fifteen hundred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I was going through the groups, and I started realizing that they were very profitable selling in, in groups at the time. It was it was the wild wild west. F- Facebook wasn't regulating anything about posting and stuff mm-hmm. like that, so it was very easy to do. Then I then I then I discovered the raffles. They, you know, you know, like two thousand fourteen thousand. Now they call them waffles because they're hiding them mm-hmm. or donations. But at the time it was the wild west. We could do raffles. So I was raffling, you know, a twenty dollar hot wheel for like forty dollars in tickets, and it was like super profitable. So I was making like two, three thousand dollars on Facebook, but I was like, okay, I'm tired of hunting for Hot Wheels. Mm-hmm. And then it's when I found a little group called Lego Investing, and it was like talking about Lego. I made a couple of friends with a couple of people. Before I knew, I was buying Legos left and right. And then they told me, why are you selling these Legos? And I'm like, oh, in Facebook. And I was like, sell them on Amazon. I'm like, in Amazon. Amazon is like the worst marketplace. I had no use market Amazon in my life other than when I sold in in the early '90s. The nineties, and I'm like, why would I sell on Amazon? And it's like, you just go sell on Amazon. So I was like, Amazon is for books. It's like, no, dude. When is the last time you have you ever heard of Amazon Prime? I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was not it. So I went and I they helped me create an account. And before I realized, I was selling you know Lego left and right. I learned how to negotiate aisles. I learned how to negotiate you know like clearances and stuff like that. And then before I realized, I was selling every type of type of toy. I was selling, uh, you know, like clothing, um, some groceries. Groceries I hated, um, but I was Same. selling. I you know. I made money with grocery um, for many years, but I absolutely hated it. It was such a hustle to try to do grocery and try to do the expiration dates. And then if something was damaged, broken, whatever else, you just got your money back. You never got anything. It, grocery to me was a nightmare. And same with like. I didn't love shoes and clothing on Amazon either because I felt like the return rates were so high. So there's definitely categories I don't like to sell in on Amazon specifically oh, for them being such a pain. My first my, my first try at groceries, I go into Kroger's and they had this huge display. It was early October and they had this huge display of Count Chocolate, you know, and I'm like, okay, I haven't seen this cereal in forever. So I said, I'm scan it. And then I saw that they had this bundle of corn chocolate, blueberry, and frankenberry. Mm-hmm. I think that's the three ones. Yeah, and the it was three, like the, the count three, chocolate cereal. And blueberry. they were selling for like 20 bucks. Okay. And they were like a dollar fifty at a time. It was it had a big one of those big signs that you know buy 10, get 10, da, 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 da. <laughs> and I looked at it and I'm like, okay, I can take this gamble. So I bought the whole, you know, display and it looked at me like orphanage you know you know you know people always ask you like oh my god you're donating this stuff yes orphanage whatever it's moving on (laughs) just get out and and i miss very good money because the people started discovering it and then next year i did a decent money with them and then next year everybody was doing them right yeah Yeah. but it usually has a shelf life when you discover something new it's a year or two and someone's gonna find it exactly Mm -hmm. so then i then a couple of years later i discovered that con chocolate came with this protein bar around the same time and those little boxes were like a dollar 75 and they were selling for like 24 dollars each mm. and i'm like oh my God. so again i bought everything but it yeah but it, but it was like like those that you could make like a gold mine then there were some that you were like when you send them they will get lost in tra- lost in tra- you know in transfer and blah, 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 transfer from one warehouse to warehouse and then it's show life, and then they will say you're selling things inspired. I'm like, yeah, but yeah, you but you didn't spending... check it in fast enough, Amazon. You've been, you you've let been it... transferring yeah. for like three months, you know, and yeah, and it's like the Lego, like, like the Oreos. Remember when the Oreos came out? Mm-hmm. Oh my god, they were awesome! Like you will find it for three bucks, you will sell it for fourteen dollars, and it was amazing. But then they will get lost, and you're like, oh, okay, or they will get squashed, right? It's yeah. like smash, and you're like, eh, forget about it. So. Yeah. I say, you know what? No more, no more groceries. So toys, clothing, that was my jam. I, I always felt, and then I tried. Were I you tried. mostly doing retail arbitrage though? Yes, you, you were doing arbitrage. arbitrage. And was I'm it just yourself, or do you have a team? Did you have a team when you were doing that? I had a small team, about two people. I didn't need more. Um, you know, I I was just 
they because then I started doing more print on demand and Amazon custom. It was for me was more profitable at the time. Yeah, let's was, talk about that transition because I know you've done a lot. Obviously, we've both been around for a couple decades and we've you know done you know eBay, then to Amazon and grocery and everything else. But you know, you had mentioned when we were um you know off off camera here about your your frustrations with Amazon and what you decided to start looking into other things, which kind of landed you um, in where you're at now with the print on demand. So let's talk about a little bit of those frustrations. I know you mentioned already um, them losing your shipments and the things that are getting damaged and crushed, but what was it? Was there a final straw for you to be like, I am just done with Amazon and their their crazy practices? Like what what was the transition for to you be doing that? Honest, um... It wasn't one thing that happened with a product specifically. Like in 2016, I was invited by Amazon to, I was, you know, there's a little marketplace that they call have merged by Amazon inside and they have print on demand. And I got, I got really good at it. And they invited a group of six people. They called us the golden ticket people. They invited us to Dallas and we went to their uh, wood facility and we went through whole the printing process. And what they wanted us is to first try to understand us, the users, and trying to get our feedback on new product development. And and we got some perks, to be honest. I mean, we were the first one to got pop sockets and stuff like that. So I got I got relationship with the you know with the vice president of you know of production, the production of finance, and all the stuff in that specific division. And so like every time they would go like to conventions, they would call us and say they. We're gonna be in XYZ. So you know, you can come, we can meet. So they went to the branding expo on Vegas in 2017. And and when we were there, um I approached, you know, the vice president and said, dude, um my sales are low because you have no control of quality you know, on who is entering. We have a keyboard staffing issue, a stuffing issue now on Amazon where you have thousands of the same design with the same exact keyword. And even if you go in, you cannot rank them because it's no way to rank the same keyword when there are thousands of keywords mm -hmm. in there. And he, the answer that he gave me is the one that told me I need to get out of Amazon. It took me about two and a half years to finally get out of Amazon. But he tells me, you... The, the sellers are not our concern. It's the it's the consumer, mm -hmm. right? If the consumer is getting what they want, I don't care. We have a thousand offerings. If in the first page of the offering they find what they want, we don't care if you make money or not. Yeah. And that you know, is actually the truth. Amazon, from the very beginning of Amazon, was all about and still is today about their customer. And yeah. unfortunately, Amazon views their customer as the consumer, the end user of a product. Um, but what they need to know is that we, as sellers, are actually more consumers than their regular consumers. And that's what I told them. Dude, I spent thousands of dollars every month on paying you for services, for fees, for storage, for transportation, for logistics, for disposal you know, mm -hmm. for claims, for whatever the reason it is, I spend thousands of dollars and I have friends who spend millions of dollars, you know, and we are your, your customer. And he says, no, you're partners. Yeah. And I'm like, no, we are not, you know, because we are not sharing the profits. You know, we are, we, you, we follow your rules and, you know, to him, it's like, no, you do the, the Amazon mentality. You are partners. You are not consume customers. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. And that's when I finally said, you know what? This is not potential for this. And I was doing, so I still, and it was until the pandemic that I couldn't find absolutely no product that I was like, you know what? This is a perfect time to stop doing retail arbitrage. I use liquidate. And I said, I use, I use liquidate. Mm -hmm. I lie. I'm still liquidating. Yeah. <laughs> I still get boxes in my garage and i'm like oh my god i still have this mm -hmm. um so it's it's a never ending but around that time is when i started going into into it, etsy 
Okay, so um, tell me about your transition now. So you went to the print on demand, you were already doing print on demand and doing well on Amazon, the merch by Amazon. And then you kind of realized this with Amazon that they really don't care about us as sellers, which is really true. But it's still, you know, if you know what you're doing, it's a great place to make oh, yeah. money as long as you follow their rules and you understand your your position. Right. Just like you said, Fernando, they really and we know that whether they say that out loud or not, we know as sellers, they really don't care much about us. They want to they make sure that the customer is happy. If the customer leaves a bad review, they don't care about us. They they care that the customer is happy or not happy. Give them the money back and they'll keep coming back. So, oh, yeah, even though they've they asked these questions right in, 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 in the members in our portal in members areas, like are we doing a good job? They no, oh. they don't care. They keep asking that, about that. You know, yeah, they, I know. I, I call them Amazon seller poll jokes when they put those little polls out there. And it's like, rate your blah, blah, blah. Do you feel that Amazon cares about you? I literally like want to be like, is there a laugh out loud like option here? Because like, no, they could care less. Even if you make $10 million, I promise you, even oh, no. if you make $10 million a year, Amazon doesn't care about you at that point. However, Amazon pays my mortgage. <laughs> so because of that, I stay on the platform and I do what I'm good at, but I try not, I, I just follow all the rules. I make sure that everything's there and all that kind of stuff. But I've also diversified my income streams because I don't want Amazon to be in control of all of my income. So I've got an eBay store. I've got Amazon. I've got Mercari. I've got mommy income. I've got some other things where I'm making money in multiple places. And so I love how that you made a transition to Etsy. So after discovering Amazon and how much they really don't care about you, and then they said to your face, you're thinking, okay, I've got to get out of this. So what um, what did you start doing on, e on Etsy and Shopify? Tell us about the transition into that. Well, Shopify, I've been, I, I have had it for a while, right? Oh, man, it's, been, it's, been, it's pretty much print on demand, print on demand, print on demand, t-shirts, you know, mugs, tumblers, anything that is print on demand. Um, so that has always been there. Um. I have sold a couple of my stores already. Like I reach, you know, the beautiful thing about an a Shopify store is that it's a, it's an asset. Yes. Right. You open an LLC with it. You go on it. You, well, I mean, don't open it immediately. Once start making money, I open an LLC. I transition it, you know, to that, to that brand. And then once you get enough email emails and you have a proven track record of sales, it's a tangible asset. So I, every time I open a Shopify store, I always say, if I can sell it for, you know, for $150,000, I'm out. And then I start another one. I know how to start Shopify stores that I don't care, you know? Yeah. So it's, I, I, it's, it's faster. So you can get, you, you know, I can get to that number in about a year, year and a half where I can sell them. So I'm like, I'm fine. And I don't, I don't focus full time in there in building that brand because I, I know it's, is to sell it. I'm not looking for my passion brand that I'm going to be retiring with it. And da, da, da. it's a business for me. It's an income stream, right? you know, and the Facebook ads, and the ads, it's they're not as cheap as they used to be once. Mm -hmm. You know, like we could, I could convert a t-shirt for less than a buck on Facebook. Now it's taking me about two, three dollars to convert a shirt. Sometimes more. Ads are getting more expensive, so it's you know it takes a little longer. So I'm like, okay, I do that. But the reason I went to Etsy is because one day, Etsy, I never touched Etsy because Etsy was a handmade place. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. And I was doing absolutely nothing handmade. The only thing I was doing handmade were mugs at one point because I was doing Amazon custom and I had my mug printing machines in the back, you know, in, in one of my, in my garage and people would send me their pictures and then I would just put in the mug. And, and so I got tired of it doing Amazon custom and asking people for the pictures because Amazon doesn't have a section where you can tell them exactly you can tell them what you want from the picture, but they will send you horizontal verticals, like two cavites. Mm -hmm. They will send you. But what turned me completely off is people send me very se like sexual pictures like of their genitalia. You know, mm -hmm. they can picture and say, put it in a mug so that would, so then they will say, so that you can remember me every time you have a cup of coffee. And I'm like, okay, this is not healthy. Yeah. Um, And the last one was like, somebody sent me a picture of a toilet and a turd. Yeah. And and he asked me for a hundred of those, you know, and I'm <laughs> like, I, so I messaged them and I'm like, okay, what the heck is this? You know? And, and he is like, oh, these are really legit. I'm quitting my job in two weeks and I want to give one of these 
going away gifts to every single one of my ex, you know, uh, co-workers. Oh my goodness. So that I'm like, crazy. so I'm like, you know what? I am, I was like, okay, I know, I know sexual was probably the worst part, but yeah. when I got this one, I'm like, okay, this is going to get more and more and more random. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to get in trouble with Amazon because one day I'm going to get something that is going to be pedophilia or something. Yeah. And I, I kind of filter it because they're in control of what goes through it. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? It, this is not going to happen. So I said, uh, out, out of this. And I, but then I rediscovered that you could do it print on demand. I was like, ah, okay. So I did that on Shopify and then Amazon, then Etsy announced that they had made a partnership with, we at the time, um, Printful. And then somebody had the wonderful idea to go and post that on Chris Green's Facebook group that were 180,000 members mm -hmm. that now you can sell on Etsy. So you can imagine in less than a week, Etsy was the loaded with print on demand products with very low quality because a lot of people selling on merch by Amazon sadly they are they were used trying to see what stick to the wall because because you have the tier system level people create an unlimited amount of crappy designs mm -hmm. and then you upload them because there is zero cost and zero risk and zero you know anything yeah so they thought they would do the same thing on Etsy and now they go and upload you know hundreds of listings with absolutely nothing sellable hmm. and you know and, and then I go also with my Etsy with my my, my and, and it was not really that great so I was like okay this is not gonna work and one day I was just searching around Etsy and I saw that people were selling digital files and yes digital files and print on demand and print and printed printables on on etsy are huge as a matter of fact that's where i go for most uh printables if i'm looking for something yes. you know just like for my daughter for school or something like that i'm like oh i'll just go to etsy i know someone will sell this for five bucks and i can print one that's like custom or even not custom sometimes just picking them so so that's interesting so you're, you're checking around on etsy and you find you know that they're the people are doing these digital files of all kinds of stuff everything from like elementary school charts to printing actual prints that people then oh, that put came, as that came later that came later like yeah. that was i'm talking is like svg files for the crickets and for stuff like that okay awesome. you know and like transfer paper like so i was like i have like five thousand designs that i had no use because you know i had full-time designers that were just pumping up junk mm -hmm. okay and so i'm like let me make some bundles with these designs that i never sold and see what happens, you know, like, so you, and they started selling, you know, and I'm like, okay. Then I said, okay, this, I'm going to make this black and white and I'm going to make an SVG file used for a cricket machine. And they were selling. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm making more money on blanks than actually selling print on demand products, mm -hmm. shipping them, risking traffic, shipping, you know, getting lost. Somebody, mm -hmm. you know, people on the internet have a fact, have, a tendency of having a different type of mirror that when they are 300 pounds they look at themselves and they feel like they're 120 mm -hmm. and they order a small size when they are like 3xl and then like this doesn't fit and then they send you a picture where you're like okay you look like a tuna can you know it's like <laughs> no way this is going to fit but they want a refund because you know you sold them something that wasn't the right size I got tired of that issue. So I don't longer sell t-shirts on, on Etsy. I still sell a lot of print on demand. Okay. I sell the home decor. I sell, you know, um, it, it supplies, you know, for, um, and mostly, mostly home, home decor and some, uh, you know, tumblers and stuff like that, but nothing cheap. Um, I realized that Etsy is a middle income marketplace or higher. Yeah. And it's a more educated marketplace. So they tend to spend a little more money in the product. So I don't have to go cheap. And they expect um, a higher quality, especially they a high quality. that are looking for, you know, uh, that's why Etsy is supposed to be either true vintage or handmade because that's their platform. They don't want a bunch of cheap Chinese sellers that are coming in here selling a bunch of stuff like dollar store items. These are handmade. These are very niche. That's very um, specific about what people are buying there. And a lot of people are buying stuff to then create new things with on Etsy. So 
That's another thing that, you know, figuring out, knowing your customer. I'm always talking about knowing your customer. And every platform has a different demographic. For example, Amazon, everybody on Amazon, they want mostly, I would say 99% of people on Amazon, they want fast shipping, they want it delivered, and they want brand new items. Now, yes, you can buy used books and use some used stuff on Amazon, but the majority of Amazon customers, people want variety, speed, convenience, variety, and they want it fast. So that's your Amazon customer. They're willing to pay extra to get something shipped, two-day free shipping, you know, everything from your HDMI cords to grocery items to your Nike shoes. They just, they want it, they want it delivered, they're busy, they don't have time to shop. eBay people are looking for one of a kind kind of items rare collectibles and cheap ebay customers want the bottom line price they want auctions they want to buy something for five bucks that's worth 50. you know ebay is just going to be a bottom line price customer and then you have your etsy customers your etsy customers are a little bit more sophisticated like you said a little bit more sophisticated they're looking for custom they're looking for unique different but higher end they they want something handmade but they don't want it you know junk handmade they want something that are good high quality unique gifts different bizarre kind of strange things and or crafty kind of create it, do it yourself, DIY type stuff. So knowing your customer and which platform you're selling on really helps you cater to them because there's different customers on different platforms. So you figured out your eBay or your Etsy customer is a little bit more you know middle income they're going to spend a little bit more money which also helps you especially if you're selling digital files make a little bit more money off the top so um you start with the digital files what what um, and that's for the cricket machines you said yes and you nailed it right etsy is that it's exactly that it's a more female oriented marketplace amazon is very balanced etsy it's probably 80 percent females buying Mm -hmm. and yes they will buy things for men but they will buy things for men that are more into feminine side in the design, like all ma- very manly designs. And Etsy will not sell because, you know, it's female buying for the man. Um, there are, and there's also the two trends, right? There is like the, 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 the ones that were looking for very unique, very hipster, you know, like this stuff. And then it's the very conservative middle of the class. I'll buy not the only things made in America mm-hmm. type of consumer. And that's what they go to Etsy. They are like, I don't want to go to Amazon because I don't want to buy Chinese crap. Mm-hmm. I want to go to Etsy because I want to support a, a, you know, a small business doing things in America, manufacturing in America. So having a big sign in your store that says, hey, I'm, I, it, it's made in America. It's a big plus when people go into Etsy and look into that. They're looking for that. And because it's, 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 you know, it's the different school of thought. So you have, and it depends, and your niche will take you, you know, to those specific consumers, you know, when you're looking to sell and not to sell. But finding products like that, and people are willing to pay a little extra when you have that tax saying, you know, made in America, producing America, manufacturing in America, because it tells them, hey, I'm not bringing things from China. You know, yes. I... I am doing it here. I'm using US, you know, US employees to manufacture and do it. Da, da, da. So I'm different costs. And people are like, yeah, I'm okay to pay because they're looking for that unique product. You know, they're like, the other day I was talking to my, you know, my mastermind, you know, my coaching students. And I told them, you know, let, let's start selling shower curtains. And I remember talking about that in uh in a workshop that i did open workshop that it was like anybody was there and i thought shower curtains people told me you're nuts the shower curtains are 35 dollars. use the blanks mm-hmm. you have to sell those for 70 dollars or 80 dollars and i'm like yes yep and, and i'm like and and yeah. like, nobody's gonna pay for that i'm like how much would you pay for that i asked the person he's like i'll pay five dollars for a shower curtain i'm like okay let me get you went to five below or yeah. one of those places it's like yeah there is no need for me to spend more than five dollars. I'm like my wife. You spend three hundred dollars in a whole decor for the for the for the kitchen for the shower. You know, yeah. The shower, the ba- the shower, bathroom the decor. Yeah, it's huge. Decor. I said, just go to. Don't even go to the mall to Macy's and stuff like that. Just go to Target, mm-hmm. and you will see that a shower curtain can be seventy to eighty dollars. She's like, there's no way. So, and it just also tells you, right? It's a lot of the people that go into Etsy has that barrier or barrier of entry. They want to sell cheap because it's what they will afford to pay. People on Etsy will pay more. Yeah. Okay. But most people don't have that mentality to charge the more and sell the more 
quality products because they in their heads they would not buy them mm -hmm. and they something that you have to keep in mind that you are not your ideal customer yes okay absolutely but i've been preaching that for so long even with people with the wholesale bundles when i tell them okay you guys wholesale bundles charge at least 20 percent more than what you're thinking because your customer they they're not you you know you might not pay you know uh, you know a lot of us as entrepreneurs um and and sellers and resellers we are um very aware of price differences we're very aware of like um we buy low and sell high that's what we do that not everybody's like that some people don't care how much it costs over here they see what they want they want it they want it in two days they want it now or your etsy customer will see hey this mug might be 30 dollars, but it has my dog's picture on it and that's what i want i want a picture with my dog on it and, and this and i want a high quality that's going to last a long time so i'm willing to spend $30 on that to where, you know, even like Christmas gifts and things like that. I got a custom Etsy Christmas gift from my daughter, which I loved and I, who knows how much it costs, but like she wanted something new, something custom, something she could only get from there. So I think it's really helpful to really, really, uh, for people that are listening, price your stuff higher. What's the worst that could happen? If it doesn't sell, you lower the price. But if you're, it, it's, it's a price mentality as well. Um, I've studied customers and how they buy and what they, how they make their decisions. Most people, if they find an item, they might price shop for a, a few minutes and they're going to see, okay, average, you know, this one's $200. This one over here is $50. And then the one in the middle is about 130. Most people look, oh, this one's high. It's too expensive. It's whatever else down here. They think cheap is going to be cheap. It's going to be low quality. So people land in the middle somewhere and go, okay, this one's reasonable. It's not super expensive. It's not the cheapest one. So I'm, when I tell people to pick prices for things and they're worried about pricing themselves out, oh, that's too expensive, too expensive. Ju there's Louis Vuitton and Walmart. That's all I have to say. There's a customer for every brand, for every price tier. You're going to have your Louis Vuitton high-end people that only want the biggest, best brands, and they think expensive means better quality. It's true a lot of times, but it doesn't always true. And then there's your bottom of the line. I don't care how much it costs. I just want it to be cheap. Walmart, you know, just go in, get it when it works, and then somewhere in the middle. And most people relate price to quality and value. And so we have to think about that. You always want to be somewhere towards the top or in the middle because mentally psychologically we do believe we all believe at some point something costs more it's usually better quality and if you think it's cheaper it's probably going to be cheaper and so shop like customers price like your customers are buying that's always my great advice when it comes to that because people will say oh i can't sell there that's going to be too expensive you know how many times people have said that to me and i'm like oh no someone will pay a hundred dollars for this and sure enough they do <laughs> You know, yes. I'm, 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 I mean, we're, we're in the same page completely. And sometimes it's, you know, like you talk about sometimes more is less. Um, let's go now to the printables that you were talking, right? You go right now and search for color, unicorn coloring books, coloring pages. You will find thousands. But then you will see that the ones that sell are the ones that offer less for the same price. You can find for $5, somebody selling you 100 pages of coloring pages. And then you can find somebody that gives you five coloring pages for the same $5. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the sales, the one with the five is selling more. Why? Because, because when somebody is going, it's like the daughter is like, mom, I want a coloring page for a unicorn. Mom goes to Etsy. Oh, I found it. I don't need a hundred. I don't know what to do with a hundred. I just need this one because now with the five, you're showing them which five you have inside. So, oh, this one is very nice. I'm going to buy those five. They download it and they go and give it to the daughter. You can create 20 different listings, 40, 50 different listings with those hundred designs. And if you just improve them a little bit, make them a better coloring page, give them a, be a better perception value and sell them for that. Etsy is not all about volume. You know, mm -hmm. you go to eBay and it's like, I give you a hundred, I'll give you five. In eBay, people will go and snatch the hundred. Just because they can say, I got a great bargain. I got a hundred. And exactly. Etsy is about, I got what I needed, you know, and I got exactly what I wanted. That's five is perfect. There's people selling sometimes only one coloring page mm -hmm. for $3 and they sell them for $3. 
Why? Because people saw the image like, this is what my daughter wants. This is what I want. It's I'm guilty. Perfect. That's me. Right. And I love that because that's understanding your customer, which is how you make money in a marketplace. I don't care if you're selling print on demand coloring pages or Louis Vuitton bags. If you understand your customer, what they want, what they expect, what they need, you can make money doing these things. And I love you know that comparison there too, because that's me. I literally paid $6 for a chart, one piece of a downloadable paper that I could print. It was this chart that I needed um, specifically for um, a school project that my daughter was doing. And I was like, I didn't found it. I Googled it, found it on Etsy, was able to print it in less than five minutes. I'm like $6 for one. And I saw the same thing you saw. It's like, oh, get, get 10 charts, get this, get that. And I'm like, I just need one. I don't need 10 charts. Why would no. I pay even $5 to buy 10 when I only need one? And this is also what I talk about with reverse bundling too on Amazon even, is that, you know, you'll go to a place like Costco and I love Costco. I have a family of five. We're a big family. We eat, you know, whatever. But my mom, mom is never going to go to Costco because she's a single person living by herself and to buy stuff in bulk at Costco is nothing but she likes Costco brand she likes some stuff so it's like reverse Costco it's you take the big sets and you break them up into singles because some people don't need 16 cans of tuna they only want two you know and so they want the, the brand so the same type of thing is that figuring out your customers and just because something has more units doesn't mean it's more valuable sometimes people don't want five of something they only want the one so i love that etsy gives you an opportunity to be able to create those things and with digital files it's no overhead you're not storing anything you're not you don't have space over here uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about you have a etsy course right with all this transition and going into from amazon to then now ebay and and making your way on etsy um how what is your course about? I know you have the no BS Etsy course, which I'm really <laughs> excited to tell everybody about. So tell me a little bit about your course. Well, uh, no BS Etsy course is my new Etsy course, right? I used to have a course that was called uh, um, Etsy POD Secrets. Mm -hmm. And I was really into P entrepreneur demand. I had the course. But in the last year, Etsy has changed so much. Even the way you create your listings, it's like they, it's like they have fun messing with us. They keep changing the whole the whole platform where they remove an app, they added another app, they do all this stuff. But Etsy has become more than just print and demand, right? For for entrepreneurs. Because Etsy was before, when I made Etsy Beauty Secrets, it was literally used. They had made people that were doing things in the back of the garage, you know, doing like woodwork or jewelry, so stuff like that. And then it was the print and demand people. Um, and then there were some of the vintage people, right? But right now, Etsy in the last year or two has grown so much where printables came into work, into, into, into place, right? Printables were like use a very small segment in the Etsy world right before the pandemic. Like they were used like some Cricut products. There were some printable, like it's on agenda, some coloring pages, but there was nothing to be serious. People wanted to buy, you know, uh, printables. They would go to teach pay teachers. They would go to create a market. They would go to all these other web platforms. But something happened in the pandemic that people started using printables and they became very dependable on printables where they couldn't go to the store to buy a gift card, you know, a Christmas cards, and now they go and print them. They couldn't go to, you know, um, to find any craps or anything like that. So to keep the kids busy, well, they will get some printables and now you can do some airplanes or whatever you want to do. Homeschooling became an issue. Now you go into Etsy and it's before you go and search for printables for education and all you will find is these little scribbles or the ABCs. Now you can find full curriculums, mm -hmm. you know, for second grade, third grade, fourth grade, following next SVC pattern. Blah, 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 blah. And they have like videos and stuff like that. And it's like, it has become so much. The vintage marketplace has also grown a lot because people started going to garage sales and guys are going to you know um go, going back to the basics of you know flipping stuff and it has to be 20 years or older and you have to prove that it's a vintage product so it has to be true vintage um not because you know because you say this vintage you have to prove that it's so all toys and stuff like that are starting to have a comeback on etsy and people people go and buy you know piece of jewelry piece of decor because right now we also have the 
new generations that want to decorate the houses like the our grandma's house used to look cottage so, core <laughs> so now they go and buy all those all, old vintage decor and to bring them to the house i have no idea why i, still I don't have either i think it's so ugly but hey, i still ugly have styles. nightmares i say that, that all but, the time ugly but they style. want to so it, it, it's it's expanding into different areas right and handmaids and stuff like that and pinch it so i want to put a course together and first help you launch your store how to set it up correctly um there's a lot of people that open stores and immediately get banned mm. because they didn't enter the checking account align correctly with their business name or their address or something and when etsy went to the verification it's like yep, they're boom, banned and then you have to be banging at doors and asking them to, to to establish because you didn't want to validate your checking account and your credit card and your checking account didn't match yeah. and he's you know so there are little little mistakes and then you go and you know and create your access and then when you start creating your, prof your profiles you don't do it right it, one thing about any marketplace when they says it's optional it's not mm. Is you know like in Etsy when this is it's optional. Never is optional. Nothing is optional. Everything has a value. It yeah. otherwise they wouldn't put it there. They're just saying okay, you're lazy. You just feel the ones that you, if we really want you to feel, but the ones that are optional. You know, yeah. we want to know about it too. Right. <laughs> in you know if you're ever listing any product you fill in every single blank that you can possibly do because like you said this is valuable to somebody some people look by a part number some people look by image searchings that's why your images are so important to have close-ups and different things like that but then your keywords are important fill out every single thing and any listing that you can fill out i have a video in the course that i show the impact of you creating a listing with the minimum required and the impact it makes if I do every single optional mm -hmm. and I, and it takes it, I don't, I don't want to lie about the number, but it was like 200,000 listings. And if, if somebody was to get like, you know, like obsessed in the filtering system and you feel everything in the blanks, you're competing against 70 listings. Mm -hmm. you know because it's yeah. just goes some people just like to go and drill down every single possible one that they find the right match they're looking for that's literally me i know for some people listening going who does that people just put stuff in the search box no i actually pick categories and pick things when i'm looking for something specific because i don't want to look through a hundred thousand listings trying to find what i need i try to be very very specific about okay this category or this item because i don't want to fish through that many listings to try to find the one thing that I'm looking for. So yeah, always use the optional um, items that are listed there, the optional um, descriptions and different um, drop down boxes and things like that, because everything makes a difference. Yeah. So like the course has about 35 different videos, 13 different sections, lots of bonuses. We give templates for designs. We get templates for all your images that you need to use you guys, in the store. I've taken a look at the No BS X Etsy, and I'm telling you, like the value that you're getting from this course for the price that it is is insane. Like I'm not, I'm surprised that like I'll just be honest, it's too cheap. <laughs> you need to raise your price on this course. Oh, it's, being, it's really, being raised. You it's being really raised. are. You really are teaching someone a new income stream, how to start, how to grow, how to how to get started with Etsy how to not make mistakes. This is why we pay for education, you guys, because if you don't know about Etsy and you're like, okay, I want to do another um, income stream and I want to try this out. Um, you Again, you can get banned and make mistakes just by not linking your checking account correctly. So you want to have this step-by-step -step. and you guys, the uh, I want you to go to mommyincome.com forward slash Etsy. You're going to find Fernando's course there. It is amazing. And there's some bonuses and some extra like workshops and lives that he did. Don't skip those. Those are so amazing. I mean, this is an expert of 25 years, more than me even, 25 years of e-commerce experience from eBay, Amazon, liquidations, Facebook Marketplace, and Etsy. This is an expert. And for $147 and some change, you can have education to help you start another income stream, an income stream that's making people thousands of dollars a month. And you're not, you don't have to hold inventory if you do printables. Now, 
I'm not much of a printable person. I'm not very creative when it comes to digital and things like that, but I am a vintage jewelry reseller and Etsy is an amazing place for that. I sell a lot of smalls because I don't have a lot of, I don't want to store a bunch of stuff. So I sell a lot of smalls and I like doing that. So you guys, this is so, the value here is so crazy. If you can learn how to make money in another way, that's worth your investment, right? So um, mommyincome.com forward slash Etsy, you're going to get Fernando's course there. It's like less than 150 bucks. I know it's not going to be that price forever because this mm -hmm. is your this is your beta launch, right? This is going to yes, be I'm, like- I, I'm just adding like, like this, this week I'm going to be teaching a workshop on print and demand. Yeah. Because I was like, I can make a video for 10 minutes or I can teach a, a workshop for two hours. Mm -hmm. So I, and I'm just going to add the section there. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to be teaching one on principles. Same thing. You know, I'm, I'm going to be added inside. And I sell those workshops independently sometimes, but this one, I, this course I really wanted to resonate mm -hmm. um, to everybody. And it's everybody. new and updated, which I appreciate it's, because as, as an Amazon curriculum creator here, I'm always updating my videos because Amazon's always changing stuff. So I love that your course is brand new and it's, it's in, it's today's date you can start your etsy as an additional income stream and if you're doing the printables or the print on demand remembering this is great for people who are um maybe creative and do a lot of, you can create different like designers or anything that like people like to mess around with that but you know that's definitely not for me i'm more of a tangible product reseller but um you know, someone who just like wants to do a little bit on the side and you want to have some design ideas. It's a fun, creative outlet that also can bring you additional money using skills that you already have. So if you already have design skills or you're already pretty creative when it comes to those things, you've got to, Fernando's the best. You guys have to go in here and watch what he's doing. He doesn't skip steps. He doesn't um, sugarcoat anything. There's tons and tons of value and information in these courses and the workshops that he's going to do. The live workshops are amazing. You're asking asking questions, you're interacting, you're seeing his screen. Like this isn't um, fluffy stuff. This is like literally how you're gonna make money on Etsy. So Fernando, thank you so much for sharing all of your, your insights and information. I've learned a ton uh, just by talking to you about Etsy and I know everyone else is too. So again, mommyincome.com forward slash Etsy. You're going to get Fernando's uh, course there. And of course, all the bonuses that he's adding there. Um, this is really good stuff, you guys. I don't usually talk about other people's courses most of the time it's because they're not very good but this this is really good and i wouldn't tell you that if it wasn't so uh, mommyincome.com slash etsy get fernando's course and then i know you said you're going to be doing some live stuff coming up so if you get the course already then you're going to be invited to the live stuff that you can yes. actually see interact i'm all about live teaching i really like live teaching because i feel like people can ask questions in the moment when they don't understand and then they can get that clarity so if you guys jumping in now and then getting in on some of these lives that fernando's doing for etsy um Again, you know, there's multiple, multiple ways online if you will just learn and apply what you're learning to make a decent income on Amazon, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Mercari, all these different things. So uh, thank you so much for your time and your energy. Cool pressure. It's been so nice getting to chat with you again and kind of learning how our journeys have have split in different ways. And I'm sure we'll we'll be catching up soon. So again, don't forget that link, mommyincome.com forward slash Etsy. Get the um, course. Again, the price is going to be going up. It has to you have to raise the price on that. Oh no, it's even it's even in the sales page it says there that once I finish the first the the, the you know the first um set of trainings it's gonna go up because yeah. uh I'm used you know when you launch a course you have to wait for people to give you feedback and sometimes some videos need to be you know redone because people were not clear or blah 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 or the sound wasn't too perfect yeah. so I'm still in that area you know where people are giving me feedback but yes and yeah. you know just to wrap it one of the reasons why I do this is because I have a lot of coaching students and we meet every week. So I have access to their stores. I have access to over 20 stores at any given time. So I'm always looking at what is changing. So Etsy rolls something out in one store before he rolls it out on mine. I get to see it. Mm -hmm. So I'm always ahead of any changes. So I can, and I, I pass all of that to anybody who's learning from me because I'm like, okay, this is coming, guys. Be paying attention. I already saw it in one store. I already saw it in another one. This other store is has having done that. This other store got banned because of this, this, and that. Now we recover it because this and that. Like, for example, the work gift. Etsy doesn't want you to use the work gift anymore, just like Amazon doesn't. You know, and things like that. So we just we we can we can be looking at stuff like that. So I'm always being able to keep update because you know, most people have they have their own store. 
and they only work in their own store. And some people don't even work in their own stores. They just do courses. I work in so many people's stores mm -hmm. every week. So I'm always up to date on what is happening. And that is a big, big advantage, you know, for my business and for everybody that is Absolutely. around as well. And you guys, wholesale bundlers, um, if you're listening, wholesale bundlers, I have a client who has a wholesale bundle box on Amazon and Etsy, and she does better on Etsy with her box than she does on Amazon, although she's doing really well with that. So if you're making wholesale bundles and they're gifty or they're, they're putting something together like that that's custom or you have your custom things, put them on Etsy. You have another outlet stream. You can also, did you know, you can also fulfill by Amazon to your Etsy customers. So you can keep your stock at Amazon, list it on Etsy and then ship it out. So, you know, using these multiple platforms, once you learn how to do Amazon, you're established there, now you add Etsy and then you add another one and you're using the same products. You're just putting them in a different form. Now, obviously with Etsy, you have to obey the rules. If you're selling, you know, single unit items, but as the wholesale bundlers, we've created our own brand we've created our own uh gift boxes and accessory sets and things like that so selling those on etsy if it applies to all the rules um you know it's another outlet for you to sell the same things you're already selling so this is just something to get your your feet wet into etsy if you are new um and then of course you can add the print on demand but if you're only learning um, from fernando how to set up your account how to not break the rules you guys there's rules on every platform and if you don't know them you don't know the you know like you said just with the word gift like who would know that you can't use that word on etsy but you can use it all over other platforms so it's really important to establish and get a good foundation of these things so Again, thank you so much for that. I'm excited for all the different updates. I appreciate that you're updating the course as things are, are changing and that it's all brand new. Um, mommyincome.com slash Etsy. Make sure you get that. Yes, it's an affiliate link. I have to say that out loud because otherwise the government will come after me. Yeah. I don't know what the rules are there. <laughs> um, but please um, go and check that out. Um, Fernando's a fantastic teacher and he's always answering questions. If you have them, he will fill in the gaps for you if you don't know. And it's a great way to get started on Etsy as an additional income stream. And who knows, maybe you'll ditch Amazon and go straight to Etsy like Fernando did because it's it's just a maybe more enjoyable, more, more fulfilling. If you're a creative type and you're not creating, that sucks the life out of your soul. You need to be creating if you're a creative. And that's maybe a place that you can be doing that as well. So Again, thank you so much for coming to the Amazon Files. I, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing, and I don't take that for granted. So thanks for your time and energy. And y'all, we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files. Bye, y'all. Thank you.